Good morning. The first thing we need to do is once again uh, thank Jerry and Diane Rothenberg for coming a long way to the Kelly Writers House of the University of Pennsylvania. Many of us, maybe most of us, uh, who became poets and who had uh, lived either directly or vicariously through the experience of the Second World War, uh, you know, the Holocaust, the, the, you know, the, the great, uh, uh, you know, very intense brief period of destruction, I mean, you know, a few years, and I think I began to write poetry under the impact of that. I was still living under the, uh, 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 as were others of, uh, of, uh, of my generation. No, and I've been med meditating, too, or, you know, thinking about uh, the, uh, you know, the statement of, uh, of Adorno or attributed and sometimes mistranslated from Adorno about, the, you know, not writing poetry after Auschwitz. Right. You know, and then I said, but, but that's wrong, you know, because really what, uh, you know, what drove me into poetry was, uh, uh, or what I feel retrospectively drove me into poetry was the experience of, uh, right. uh, of uh, uh, you know, of, of Holocaust. Uh, and you don't, you don't century. really disagree with the, 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 what we imagine to be the impetus behind Adorno's statement, which is that poetry after Auschwitz would be barbaric. That oh, is to oh, say, no, you no. believe that the enormity of that situation robbed language of its uh, capacity to express appropriately what had happened. The, di the disagreement is what happens afterwards, because you believe strongly, and you've said this in Kurban, you said it at the end of The Burning Babe, I believe, and you've certainly said it in various statements, that, that poetry is all we have mm -hmm. left. Uh, well, I, I think that, you know, that... Uh the, uh, the transformations that poetry makes possible, uh, you know, were, uh, you know, to me a more meaningful response than to, uh, you know, than, than, than silence, although silence can be very powerful, but who, you know, who will know about it? Um, <laughs> I've been haunted by your Jewish dream. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a dream that it's the, it's the beginning of the prose that opens the big Jewish book. And I wondered if you would be so kind as to read the opening passage, which would be in here. I'd give you a page number. If you give me the page number, Jerry, I, you know, I will do that. I uh, wondered if you would read it, and then and, and, and maybe I'll ask a, a uh, question. I'm haunted by this dream. Uh, yeah, well, I was too. And, and, and uh, you know, sometimes I make up dreams. Uh, you know, I pretend, <laughs> pretend, you know, but, th but this was a real dream. I thought it was, you know, it's a real, a, a classy dream. <laughs> uh, there was a dream that came before the book, and I might as well tell it. I was in a house identified by someone as the house of Jews, where there were many friends gathered, maybe everyone I knew. Where, uh, whether they were Jews or not was unimportant. I was, and because I was, I had to lead them through it. But we were halted at the entrance to a room, not a room really, more like a great black hole in space. I was frightened and exhilarated, both at once, but like the others, I held back before that darkness. I now recognize that dream as central to my life, an event and mystery that has dogged me from the start. I know that there are other mysteries for others or for myself at other times more central, and that they may or may not be the same. But creation, poesis writ large, appeared to me first in that house, for I was aware then, and even more so now, that there are Jewish mysteries that one confronts in a place no less dangerous or real than that abyss of the Aztecs. A difficult, a dangerous place, a deathly place. It is dark, it is light. This is where your, your uh, Jewish self as a poet is is created here. Your mm -hmm. the dream is the dream of the darkness that gives way to uh, the Jewish poet. Sorry, there's no such thing as an un, an unformed or an unfinished language. You've said a today. Of times. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that most of those languages that uh, you know that have been tracked and you know and had been labeled as uh, as primitive, uh, you know, were very comp complex languages. You know, and the um, uh, uh, the, uh, the the ceremonial poetry, the ritual poetry, the shamanistic poetry, you know, that was a part of those cultures, uh, was, if you looked at it the right way, uh, you know, uh, complex, often very complex in meaning. Uh, you know, uh, you know, certainly complex in. Uh, in performance. Uh, this is a question from Robert Sward. Robert Sward, the poet. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Hello, Robert. Hello. Paul Blackburn was a dear and valued friend. Mm -hmm. I knew him in New York in the 1960s, and it was Paul who introduced me to other write and other writers to Julio Cortazar, Garcia Lorca, Octavia Paz, and Provencal poetry. He was passionate about their work. To what extent did Paul Blackburn influence you and your work with ethnopoetics? 
Yeah, I. Uh, and, and, and it's, a, it's a good question. I, uh, you know, Paul certainly influenced me as a, as a presence and a and a very close friend. Uh, uh, he, again, he was very encouraged. He was very responsive to the ethnopoetics work. I, I don't think that he influenced me in getting into the ethnopoetics. Uh, you know, but there was a a lot that uh, you know that that we shared. Uh, he taught me a lot about the, the, the sound of my own voice, listening to him. He was an you know, extraordinary interpreter in, uh, in readings of, uh, you know, of, his, of his own uh, poetry. Uh, and uh, uh, again, he was um, uh, you know, writing very much in the American grain, probably more than me. But you know, at the same time, uh, you know, uh, Europe was part of, uh, you know, of, of his consciousness. I just did basically want to hear more about the confluence of the surrealist and the Dada with the more ethnomusicological, um, you know, poetry you brought to the forefront. Because to me, that's one of the best things. Um, you mean the convergence yeah, the, of those two modes? Yeah. Well, the uh, the the Dadas and surrealists, but you know, but like uh, other poets and, uh, and and artists were uh, early in the 20th century, very much in the process of. Uh, uh, discovering the uh, you know the human roots of uh, of poetry and uh, and and art, uh, you know so the the first considerations of uh, uh, of uh, so-called primitive art as something more than primitive come uh, you know come from those early uh, certainly on modernist the movements. painting uh, side, but uh, not not quite as much well, on, on the on the side. on the painting side uh, or uh, you know or the sculptural side, right. uh, uh, you know because that was uh, uh, you know. Uh, you know, Picasso could Picasso, uh, you know, could, could lift up the small statue or the mask or whatever it was when it, he makes the statement about this being as beautiful as the uh, you know more beautiful than the v Venus de Milo. Uh, uh, you know, it, uh, the, the the poetry presented a, a, the usual language uh, barrier. For those <laughs> for those who have not explored the mm. connection that Leanne's question asks about mm. between the uh, you know the primitive. Poetics and uh, archaic materials, and Dada, for instance. This uh, book, Prefaces, which collects many of Jerry's prefaces and, and other uh, critical pieces, prose pieces, uh, hits this point five or six times brilliantly. And so, if you if you want to explore that point, this is the book um, to do, to use. Um, and this maybe goes back to to the Jewish stuff. Uh, the one polemical moment in your career that really, to me, stands out is your essay against Bloom. Yes, that's uh, great. Where you know you really pull no punches, and the, and there the question is uh, his absolute absolutist sense of poetic hierarchy, that you know there are good poets, and then there's the rest, and we can discard them. And also of the um, agonistic relationship among poets. Right. Great no, it, it is it, it's it, it, yeah, it is a funny kind of uh, 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 tension. Uh, part part of the avant-garde project, you know, as I understand it, uh, you know, was uh, you know the, the democratization of art, you know. You know, but there's the tension, you know, because you're setting yourself apart as a, you know, as a, you know, the chosen visionary company, or you know, you know, the, you know, those, uh, you know, your avant-garde are always self-proclaimed. You know, you have to proclaim yourself an avant-garde. Um, uh, you know, uh, avant-garde. Uh, you know, usually one doesn't think of an avant-garde of one. Uh, you know, avant-garde. You know, seems to presuppose a collective <laughs> enterprise. <laughs> Is it possible to really to have uh, uh, to write this kind of poetry that you are interested in from a purely uh, mm -hmm. non-religious secular uh, secular voice? You know, for me, it's uh, it's the central question of much of what I've done. Uh, you know, that is, you know, how can one keep a, a poetic tradition alive in a uh, in, in a secular world? Uh, you know, and I certainly don't want to go into a uh, you know into a religious world. I'm a secularist. Uh, you know, I uh, you know I want to have n nothing in a personal way. Uh, you know, to uh, to you know to do with establishments of uh, you know of, of religion. You know, but I recognize you know the the sources you know of uh, you know of poetry. 
uh, you know, resting, uh, you know, uh, on a religious uh, basis. That's where they come from. Uh, you know, that's uh, the, you know, the, the varieties of religious experience, uh, you know, are so closely connected, you know, even, uh, co you know, connected with forms of poetry, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that don't have, you know, visionary things coming into your head, you know, but, uh, you know, but writing processes. Uh, so it's, uh, I have no answer to that. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, it, that's the question. Uh, you know, for me, that's a very, very central uh, uh, question. And